Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, before we do start, let us give a brief little review. Now, in the last part, a number of events have happened. We had Deku. We also had the gallery event. Now, an event was being hosted on Earth to show that the planet was willing to have aliens on its surface. Many different aliens were coming from around the galaxy, if not the universe, to meet Izuku Midoriya. This is a very big thing. Earth has two different empires backing it. The Incursion and Tetraman. And right now, they were seen as a lesser civilization moving quickly up the ranks. Earth right now is attending a party and has a gun poking out of its pocket. It's just sitting at the table and people are worried Earth might use it against them. However, there is Izuku Midoriya. Izuku Midoriya is an Earthling who has shown much power and much responsibility with it. However, whenever Izuku was going to give a speech of the party, he had a problem. Mawar arrived with a robot army, and the plumbers, they had to evacuate people and take them on. Deku used Diamond Head, and when that wasn't enough, he used Ultimate Diamond Head to fight Malware. Malware went running, and Deku took down a massive robot that was still inside the center. Now, whenever he was in that room, he also ran to two plumbers. When they got more people outside, the two told Deku about a bomb in the building. Izuku disabled it, and tried to talk to these two about these events. Some things were not adding up. Mainly, how they knew the bomb was there. But one of them accidentally said something that shouldn't have been said. Especially because they called him their father. Specifically, dad. And this was quite alarming. Now, along with that information, there was later that night, where Eunice revealed to Izuku she was pregnant. And Deku was already dealing with the fact that he found out Kendo the week prior was pregnant, and him and her dad almost got into a bit more of a fight. Now then, with that being said, we do currently pick up with Izuku. Right now, a lot's been going through his head. It's been a few days. Earth has begun to settle back down after the attack from Malware, and the plumbers are still trying to track him down. However, Izuku, he's a little busy at the moment. Currently, him flying through the air as he's to evade the lasers as people in jetpacks are flying away. And Deku, he does go to move fast through the air. Him going to counter the attacks as Jet Ray, blasting out directly at the people. And Izuku, he does go to watch somebody going to fly past a building and currently begin to move through the skyscrapers around the area. And Deku turns, watching as another person, they are flying up over, and Deku does see that. Him a bit annoyed. Before he does, go to transform and currently fly through the building. Him moving through it as there is the man in the jetpack, who does go moving around and going to turn, looking for Izuku, looking to see if they could get away. Got eyes on him? No, I don't see him. I don't see him. We should just be running, guys. <laughs> Are you serious? We got him on the ropes. Besides, we got him distracted. That's enough. You sure? Because I don't think they go flying down. Currently, him phasing through the building and bringing out his hands, elongating them and wrapping around the man in the jetpack, for seeing a shock to his body as amphibian. On the guy, he does a fall limp. Currently, him crashing through the window, and Deku does a him down, chasing a spider monkey and shooting a web onto him. As Deku does a turn, transforming and going to leap out again. At least you're going to ask Bakko how his situation is going. And Bakugo, he does currently stand there. Him over a few people who were trying to rob the place. Talking about how they've got it handled over here. Him turning to Kai. And there currently is Deku. Who does go flying back into the air and looking around. Before he has seen the distance, some smoke. As he has to move fast. Flying through the air and going to crash into the person. The two moving as the person is bring their hand up and blast at Jet Ray. Deku begins flying backwards through the air and going to turn. 
him turning into Spider Monkey for bringing his hand up and going ultimate. Him going to jump back around and blast out with his mouth spider webs. And the guy, he was currently spinning before he is struck in the foot and then he does go moving downwards. As Deku does a crash onto the road and bring his hands over his head. Him pulling the guy down and smashing him to the ground. For Deku, there's a walk over and stand over him. Him going to shoot down webs as he has to bring his hand down. The guy, screaming a bit, says this massive gorilla, it's above him. And Deku would have pulled him directly up by the collar, expressing, he saw there was three of them. Where is the third one? I, I, I don't know. Listen, I, I don't know. Deku unhinging his jaw before expressing, he wants to know where the third one is. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. He, he was in the air. He was in the air. Just, just, please, let, let me go. Deku going to let go of him. Before, he is awfully stand back up and begin to look around. Before, he does, go turn and transform. Flag into the air fast. And people, they do to see that. Currently, Deku going to get to the top of a building and transform into Wild Mutt. Before he does sit there, him having his senses, begin to try and pick up on a lot, hearing a lot of things. And this, it does want to annoy Izuku. Him staying there and bringing his hand up, radioing in. He got two of them, but the third guy got away. <laughs> That's not good. Kai expressing. They'll be able to track him, though. They've got the information on the technology. Fact is, they might know who the buyer was already. So the information will come in soon. They can track him down and find him when he tries to hide. Plus, with how expensive the technology is, they're pretty sure he's not going to try and ditch a jetpack. <laughs> you kidding me? I kind of want one. Yeah, Bakugo, I want one too. Though plumber issue ones aren't too bad. Yeah, but they could be better. Izuku? Hmm? You alright, man? Deku's just staying there. And looking down on the city. It's... Complicated, you two. Listen, um... I guess we should go to lunch? Maybe... Right. Maybe. Though, what about Mina? Uh... She's a little bit busy. She's in Undertown. Okay. But... Are you sure you can go to lunch? Yeah, Zuku. Don't you have a few other... Well, things to do? Kai, I know what you mean. Atea is coming back to Earth... Today. Loma is fine. She's dealing with a security situation of her own. Trying to make sure Earth is locked down. We're also trying to find malware. And that's another thing. He took one of Luma's people. She's not standing for that. She's got the entire armada of hers patrolling space. Anywhere close by. And that, it covers a pretty good portion of the Milky Way. Jesus. Yeah. There's one thing she doesn't like. It's people messing with her own. <laughs> Little terrifying. Really terrifying. Not really Bakugo. She's a little bit more of a, a softy. Hmm? Do tell. Kai turning. Bring her hand up and smack him in the arm. And Deku talks about it for a bit. You know, he really shouldn't. Luma might twist his arm on that. Hmm? You serious? Yeah, though, let's get lunch. Uh, th there's a few things I should probably tell you guys. Now, Baku does a turn to Kai, currently hanging up, asking her if she thinks he's been acting weird. Weird how than usual. I don't know, just a little weird. Maybe. Bakugo, Mauer was a pretty intense guy back in the day. He was? Yeah. He did a lot. 
he messed with Izuku, messed with family. He tried to blow up Gallen Prime. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, that's another story. Izuku's not happy he's back. Honestly, I'd say he's a close second. To what? Ghost Freak. He was just scary. <laughs> sure he was. I'm going to turn. And currently getting back over the car. As Deku does come flying down and turning human again. Him being led inside as a three, they do drive them down the road. Currently heading to a place to get some food. And the people only do to see Izuku in the back seat and, well, you know, with them, they do to talk about a few things. Them getting some extra food, stuff for free, and people asking Izuku for his autograph. And Deku, he does go through this process. Currently, them going to drive away as people, they do catch glimpses of him in the car. And there actually is where Bakugo he has a pullover 10 minutes later in a parking lot where all of them are alone. And Bakugo currently does a turn, currently turning down the radio and expressing to Izuku. So, how do you tell him a bit of a story about malware? Hmm? Oh, why the interest? Oh, you know, he's been on your mind, right? He's been the main attraction. <laughs> you know, you're just a little not you at the moment. <laughs> it shows that much, huh? Yeah. What? If you're not concerned about that, then you're concerned about meeting your kids from the future? I'm sure that was pretty freaky. Oh. Yeah, I, uh... I talked with them. That's a little weird. Uh-huh. What, the idea that you're going to be a dad one day? Deku going to look out from his drink. And Bakugo, he does stare at Deku's expression. Before he does a swallow his milkshake and express. Bakugo, what if he told him one day was sooner than he thought? Hmm? Kai going to turn. Ask him what he's talking about. And Deku, we'll stare at Bakugo. Who currently does go to chew his food and then go to grab his drink. Before he has to express, Eunice and Kendo are pregnant. And Bakko, he does a gentleman choke on his food as he does have his drink in his mouth. Him going to bring his hand up and turn, currently opening the door and spitting everything out as he is being a cough. Before Kai does steer directly to Zuko. And her eyes are full of surprise. Huh. <coughs> Seriously, next time, don't, with a drink in my mouth, don't talk. Like, say, what, hang on. Oh, God. Uh, I almost lost my lunch for a minute. What? Yeah, Bakugo. Um, Kendo's almost a month along. Eunice is not that far behind her. Someone's been busy. Hey, I, I didn't mean for it. I just... It happened. Eunice? Yeah, actually, that's a good question. She's... Technically a robot, right? Not really. Well, I mean, the Omnitrix turns into an alien, right? So... So, the Unitrix turns the Omnitrix into a human? Maybe? But if that's the case, that just poses a number of questions. You guys, she's a person, alright? Okay, she's had that debate with herself a lot, and this is freaking her out more. She is happy about it, but... At the same time, she's calling asking the questions, and she's terrified, and I'm trying to calm her down, but she's, if, she sees, if she sees me freaking out, she's going to freak out more. Uh-huh. And 
how did things go with Kendall? Her dad was going to murder me. <laughs> Should have expected that. I'm, she told both of us at the same time. Oh. Really? That's sort of not a good idea. Listen, I just... Let's just go talk to Mina. She already knows about it, though. You told her? Yeah, she was the first person I told besides my parents. And my grandpa. <laughs> wow, so you're telling us last. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you. Whatever, whatever. It's just uh, surprising is all. Hmm. Currently, Bako going to eat. As Deku, he does sit there himself, having some of his food as his ultimatrix does get a beep. And Deku, he has a turn pressing onto it, as it is another message from Asmuth, asking Izuku if he does have a moment to talk, face to face, because there are a number of things they need to discuss. And Izuku stares at that. Uh, Kai, can you let me out? Hmm? Uh, sure. You got a good run? Something happen? Uh, no, I gotta have a chat. Her gonna let Izuku out. Before getting back in the car, and Deku, he has a message to Asmuth. And Asmuth immediately does get an answer. Express to Izuku. There are a number of things they need to talk about. Listen... Asmuth, if this is about Eunice, then I don't even know where to begin with that with you. No, Izuku. I called primarily to talk about malware. However, Eunice, if you do wish to have to discuss him first, we can. Whatever is best. Fine. Information about malware first. Malware... He teleported into Earth. The technology he used from what I have been gathering is different. Not saying that I am familiar with. As far as I'm aware, it is another species tech entirely. Not of my own design nor creation. So, that is not good. However, there is also the fact that malware absorbed the secondary helix years ago. Yeah, so, is there a way to track him down using that? Well, there might be, Izuku. It will take some time, but I will try and look into bio-readings of his from the past. See what I can pick up on. If I can get faint traces around Galvin, Prime, or on his home planet, then we'll see what we can do. See if any technology affected by him does carry his same signature. And then follow it. But, Izuku, I do want you to know. About Eunice. Oh god. If you're going to try and give me the debate of she's not real, Asmuth, I think the latest events right now prove otherwise. Yes, Izuku, they do. And that is why I'm calling to tell you I'm sorry. You see, Asmuth, I don't think you understand. Uh huh? Izuku, Eunice is everything malware was not. Malware was a culmination of my own fears. Everything I thought she could be. But you said she is kind. She is caring. And she is empathic. She puts your mind at ease? She does. As she's one of the greatest people I've ever met. She's just... She knows how to keep things simple. Not big, make big deals out of them if they're not a big deal, or overreact or over exaggerate. And what of the latest events? I'd say they're a pretty big deal, Asmuth. Sorry. I'm just. You're freaking out. It's a biological reaction to your adrenaline spiking. Yeah. Sorry. It's just. Eunice has been given a truly unique ability, Izuku. Hmm? And that would be? Eunice is a machine capable of feeling like 
she exists. I've seen the data and looked into a lot with her. She sent me over scans of her condition. And I do have to say, I frighten myself sometimes with how well I created her. What do you mean by that? Izuku, originally I thought she was a machine given the experience of an organic being. But I find myself questioning if that is the case anymore. I find myself questioning if she is not her self-sentience. And that is another thing. I created the galvanic mechamorphs as a form of life, for an experiment. Eunice was made to catalog life and understand it. A byproduct of her form was to be able to interact with native people, native organisms of said life. But to experience life from their perspective, to experience it in their shoes entirely, and this latest update to being able to create it, that is... It was not in the original blueprint, Izuku. Do you understand? I think I do. So what are you saying? Because if you're saying what I think you're saying, then we might have a problem. I'm saying, Izuku, a lot of the things I've created in the universe have had results. At one point in time, I created a weapon. An actual weapon. And it was devastating. I saw it rip apart a planet, Izuku. Really? Yes. I thought it could be my greatest creation. It could help harness the powers of the universe. And control them. But then I realized how bad that was. I put that weapon in storage. I've hidden it. And I began development of the Omnitrix. I've lost a lot of things in life, Izuku. And this development with Eunice of her creating life, it may be the first step in me changing my ways a little bit. If there are any problems with Eunice or further things that need to be looked into or development-wise, message me. I will come immediately. This is... An interesting development. The perfect version of a machine experiencing what it means to be human. If not even becoming human itself. You still don't believe she's independent. I don't know what to believe about this, Izuku. This child, however, is unique. I've deleted all files on Eunice. Deleted blueprints on her as well. And Sunder... As far as he's aware, he's the only one who knows about her. Rumor of her existence could spread. However, that you should keep an eye on. Make sure no one knows she is a machine. Avoid the back of her neck. Remember that, Izuku. I will. But you said you're going to find malware. I will be looking into it, Izuku. I'll hand over the information to the plumbers. And after that, they will look for him. What is it, Ku? Hmm? What is it, Asmuth? I'm glad you found my device. I do not know how you gained master control. But it is good that you have it. Many more threats can prevent themselves in the future. Be ready for them. Do you understand? I do. If I need any help, Asmuth, I'll call. Though, I don't think she'd mind a visit from you. You are technically her father. <laughs> I'm busy at the moment. Though when I do have time, perhaps I might come by. Hey, I'm going to hang up. And Deku does sit there, leaning on the trunk. And Bakugo, he has a turn, shouting for Izuku not to lean. And about how he should really get back inside. And Izuku, he does that do so. Currently, them hanging to Undertown to continue the search. Seeing if there's any more developments with the malware situation. Amina, she was currently on a job. 
investigating something other than the malware incident. Now, we do cut to later at Izuku's home. Deku, he does go to fly down and into the shields. Currently, Deku going to see it his ship sitting on the landing pad as he's a land on the patio and go to walk in, turning human. And Deku, he does look around, smelling coffee. The afternoon? Him turning his head. And currently, he does get to hear someone snoring. Him walking over and seeing Atea laying on the couch. As he has to turn his head and see Eunice laying on the other couch. Him going to bend down, bring his hand up and tapping his fingers on her cheek. Her jumping up and going to turn. Currently, her reaching for a blaster before... Right. She's not in her jacket. <sighs> what? You're home. Yeah, sorry. What's wrong with this coffee? I've had a pot of it, and I still feel tired. I just want more sleep. I've been awake for way longer than I feel like any living creature should be. I've dealt with enough situations, and I just want a break from this empire. That might be Kendo's decaf. Who would invent caffeine, coffee without caffeine? Are you sure you don't want to go to bed? Maybe I should sleep. I've just been exhausted, and this <laughs> devil's creation, as you call it, non-caffeinated coffee, I need to blow up the farm that made this. Atea, go to bed. Listen, I'm happy you're home, but I've got some work to do. I came to check in and see how you were doing. Her eye turn, jumping over the couch and going to bring her hands up, pulling Deku in a hug. As right now, Deku does wrap his hands around her. Her talking about how she's just glad to be finally home. And this whole thing with her dad and the Empire and some of the other places they rule, they're finally being at least understand a lot. Uh, understand what? The way I plan to do things. It's simple. We're willing to do galactic trade and our Empire, or my Empire, I should say, it's willing to offer an exchange. Trade with others. And even, well, bring some into the fold for their protection. Really? Yeah. I asked some Eunice about some advice. She gave me some, and I've been putting it to good use. Gotta say, a lot of planets are willing to cooperate whenever you're not there to destroy. You're there to help. Though it does make things awfully boring for certain incursions. Anyways... Uh, if I'm going to go to bed, I'm going to have a shower and go to sleep. Not used to Earth's time frame yet. Do you want to join me? Uh, for the shower or the nap? Why not both, Izuku? It has been a second. <laughs> I tell you, it's been two months. I know. And I'm just excited to be back home. I get it, I get it. Listen, how about when you get readjusted, I can take you out to dinner. Okay? Then we can spend a day together. You can catch up on sleep, and you probably might not fall asleep on the couch again. Fair? That's fair. Though... I might just go straight to bed, actually. Yeah, how about I help you? We're going to turn, walking down the hallway. And Deku does help Atea to her room. Before he currently does go to turn, makes his way through the facility and heading to his own private office. Now, Deku does walk into the room, 
him turning and tapping a button on the door before it is a close behind him and he has a turn back, stepping into the room and looking around. Before he does, going to sit in the middle and fold his legs over each other. Him going to turn and pressing a button on the floor. Currently, a slot going to open up as Deku, he does, going to watch the computer begin to display a holographic desk in front of him. And Deku, he does, go to do one thing. He starts to type a few things in. Currently, him, going to sit there as right now he does a stare on. The wall in front of him beginning to upload with multiple bits of data. On the right side of the screen, it does tell Izuku a few things. All the information from teleportations of the night Mel were attacked. All the teleportations on Earth and Undertown, and with the gala event also being highlighted. And then there are also the current number of readings they've gathered from the teleportation reports. And all the wavelengths they've been fluxing from. And it, it's all over the radar. And Deku does stare at that. Along with looking at the list of aliens in the middle of his screen, about how many of them have been taken. And if the numerous reports of other missing individuals could be tied to this. The reports for teleportations, some of these readings are similar to other reports the plumbers have in records. And if any of them are smuggling rings or just generalized crime on Earth via teleportation, the plumbers should be able to handle this. It'll take a lot of time before they even figure out how to solve that. They could limit teleportation, but that also does limit Earth's new, well, exportations and imports. Things that are not Earth-based. Iron is one of the most rare elements in the universe. Earth happens to have a major abundance of it, and they have been able to sell that for a very high price and use it as a bargaining chip. However, they have to be more careful with who they sell it to, since it is also a highly dangerous element, apparently. Now, Deku, here's a turn to the left of the screen. Him with a number of reports as well. And Deku, he does sit there. Before he's a turn to his left, currently the ground underneath him begin to rotate as Deku, he does go to bring his hand down. Him going to tap another button as he does going to reach down into the floor. Him pulling out a candle. Him going to light it as he does going to wait. And Izuku, he does go sit there. Before he does, go turn back to the screen and just stare on. Bring his hands up and turn to focus. Trying to just let himself relax. Think about this information. Let it go through his mind. And look at everything else. Okay. Bakko has information about Malware's robots. He's got a lot there. But the technology. I'm typing a few things in. And going to be in half pictures display on screen as well. Every image that was taken of these robots, including the one he impaled on Diamond Head's spike. This is interesting. It means a number of things. It leads to a lot. Hmm. No, no, no. Some of this tech he has seen. It looks familiar. Why does it look familiar, though? Hmm. Okay. Teleportation technology and the technology here. Mauer mentioned a Class 5 battle droid. Inspector 13? Maybe, maybe. It looked very similar to the Tachodon. But the Tachodon and Inspector 13... They weren't using teleportation technology. Unless Malware is working with Inspector 13. But that's not the case. They shut that down. That's not possible. 
<sighs> Unless, ah, oh, god damn it. Hmm. Okay, so go. Just try and think. If it's true that Inspector Thirteen's working with malware, that does pose problems. Malware would have used more advanced technology. He would have had a Tekadon robot built to f battle your original aliens. Maybe even try to adapt to the ones you have. No, 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 no. Thirteen has blueprints on how to deal with intangible villains. Well, intangible entities. Malware is an interesting villain. He could absorb it and fight him on even playing fields. But that would have made him invulnerable to a number of his aliens, though. Hmm. If he was able to be taken on by Diamond Head, then that poses problems. He would have been stronger than Humongousaur. Okay, okay. He also wouldn't have been able to be crushed. Hmm, so 13's not the option here. Then again, it would not have appreciated malware incorporating its technology into itself. Hmm. Okay, so he's dealing with a techno cannibal and with the fact that no, malware would betray them. He's unstable. Hmm. 13 wouldn't work with him, so he's out of the list. Okay, but that doesn't make sense then. They're going to staring on. And he does get a strange feeling. The aliens missing. The technology in front of him. The teleportation. Deku bring up the Ultimatrix. Currently, Izuku transforming into an anodite. And right now, he does still stare on. And Deku is trying to level himself back out. Keep his mind at ease. Focus on the information and stare at what's in front of him. The pieces in front of him. And Deku, he does go do one thing. He has a type rookie in to look and see exactly what the materials the metals are made out of. And Deku, he does a turn. As he does go to spin his finger around on a dial and then go to press another button. As right now, the computer is running more diagnostics to the materials and cross-referencing them with things currently in the plumber database. And Deku, he has to wait for a second. Him staring on. Missing aliens, teleportation technology. Hmm. Deku's staring at his screen. As information does begin to pop up on a list of things. And Deku does see a file with one name in front of it. As Deku stares at that, him going to press onto the file as it open. And the minerals inside, they are an over 70% match. And Deku looks at that. Vilgax. This technology is similar to Vilgax's, if not an almost exact match. Malware, he either hijack these or no no the metals are a match it's similar but not all of it that's not good though if he has access to Vilgax's technology what does that mean okay this just got a little bit, bit more bad wait a second Deku gonna turn him going to swipe everything to the left and then going to pull up the information about his speech. Him going to watch on as he's stand there on stage. Before, Malware does a teleport in and Deku does a deposit. Him watching as Malware has his hand up ready to hit Izuku. And Deku, he does a back things up. Him going to zoom in and look directly where Malware would appear. Before backing it up and beginning to increase the audio. And Izuku, he does it to hear himself talk louder. Before, he does go to lower himself on the audio range and then increase the sounds in the background. As right now, Deku, he does begin to hear chatter inside the crowd. 
before he does, could at least hear another sound. And he has to tap things on the computer screen currently to isolate it. And then he has to play the audio. Hearing that noise. No, no. That noise, it's... That's Vilgax's technology. And Deku immediately does it a turn. Him going to bring up the Ultimatrix and tap Ducky onto a few things. Beginning to inform his grandfather about the situation. And currently there actually is Ken, who is sitting in a meeting talking to a few people. And he does go to answer. Him asking Izuku if there's anything happening. Grandpa, I have a lead. The technology being used, it's all Vilgax's. Most of it is. The teleportation technology is his. Track that and isolate. See what you might find. Along with that, there's a theory I'm working on. A theory? Yes. Every scrap of remains you have on Vilgax, destroy it. Now. Malware might be after anything that could be a possible... I, I don't know. He's got some sort of plan. I'm trying to figure it out. Izuku, slow down a bit. What do you know? Not very much. As far as I'm aware, he's doing something. Kidnapping aliens and possibly building an army. He's building something. I... I want you to look into this. Find out more. I think... I think malware has been on Earth before, after everything happened. I can't say that for certain. These disappearances go to months back. The farthest one goes back at least seven, okay? We need to look farther than that. If it goes back farther, that just brings up more questions. Okay, Izuku, okay. Though are you all right? No. I... I'm not. We don't know what he has already. Who is in his pocket and what he spent all this time doing, Grandpa. We've got to act fast. I'll give the information over to Luma's people and Ateas. But afterwards, I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need a minute. I just I need a second. Alright, Izuku. We'll send the information out. See what we can do and see what we can find. All right? Good. Look for any strange power surges as well. If there's something off about them or anything, let me know. Keep an eye on planets that do not have any life forms on them as well. Can you do that? Izuku, I'm not sure the Proctor would like that. Grandpa, any available planet that does not have a civilized center there, anyone on it at all, it could be a possible hiding spot. We're just clearing our bases. That's all I'm asking, okay? Okay, Izuku, okay. You seem a bit worked up on this. Grandpa, he teleported in. If I walk outside my house, he might teleport in and just try and attack me. We don't know what he's doing, okay? I understand. I'll send in a report. See what I can do. All right? Thank you. Let them know this is coming from me, though. Not you. It's a concern, concern I'm having. I'm sure that'll push it through faster. Okay, Izuku. Will that be all? It will be. Thanks. Also, Grandpa? Yes, Izuku? I appreciate your help. <laughs> You're welcome, Izuku. Him going to hang up. Currently turning and expressing to everybody in the room about what's happening. Since this meeting can be put on hold, the situation right now has changed. And we do currently cut over to Malware. Malware does sit in his base. He has been very, very busy. He has done quite a bit. With Vilgax in the land of the living once more. He's been quite the little problem. However, the additional modifications he's made have been able to help the Conqueror. 
and he has been compliant. As far as he's aware, Vilgax will do anything for his revenge, and this, it will do quite a lot. What he plants will make Vilgax stronger, will make him better. It will make him the enemy to take down Izuku Midoriya, the one who will take the Omnitrix and begin his reign of Earth. Yes, there will be problems. Yes, there will be challenges. The Tetrabands and Incursions will want to battle. But by the time that Malware is done with him, he will be too strong for them to take on. Now, we do currently have Vilgax, who does sit there as Malware does begin to do quite a few things with the technology in front of him. Before activating the machine in Vilgax, he does go to begin to have the tubes inside electrify. It beginning to glow as Malware does a step backwards, turning his head to the other aliens in the room. Now, currently, Vilgax, he does a sit there in the tube, before Malware does a look back at him and watch as Vilgax does begin to shift and move around, beginning to have his true form be undone. Rhino him going to stand there in a humanoid shape surrounded by energy, and Malware, he does a watch. As Vilgax, he does begin to feel the power flow through his veins. He begins to feel all of this. He feels great, reinvigorated, remade, stronger than ever. And currently, there is where the lights do go to click. And Vilgax, he has a turn. Him breaking through the tube as Malware does stand there. Vilgax stepping forwards and bringing his hands back up, finding himself remade. This is the best he's ever felt. He felt stronger than he did whenever he went to co conquer Earth, to challenge Izuku. He played by the rules, but this creature, it does make points. Their temporary alliance can be made. However, he still does not trust it. It wants the Omnitrix just like how he does. Though, maybe his plans were misplaced. He created a device to mimic the powers of an Osmosian, steal abilities from other races, and give them to himself. He used that to become stronger than ever. And now, Malware has redesigned the machine. And right now, he does stand there, stronger as ever. However, where exactly does this leave him? Where does this leave Vilgax the Conqueror once again? The boy from Earth humbled him as a child. And right now, there is the fact that this boy, he conquered him once more. He did not let him get the Omnitrix. He will be a problem. So what exactly does that mean? What does Vilgax need to do? Wait? No. No. He needs to expand his range. Expand his abilities. More power is needed. Much more. And that it does cross Vilgax's mind. For he's a turn to Malware. And Malware does it look directly at Vilgax. Expressing to him about the new abilities he does feel he possesses. They seem adequate. However, are you sure we'll be able to take him on? I'm fairly certain. He possesses the Ultimatrix. The Ultimatrix. Yes. Hmm. Perhaps we'll have to do something a little different then. This does complicate time frames. He took me on with one alien. He was powerful. He called it Atomics. And then there's more. Hmm. Much more. 
Perhaps we will have to find more. If you can bring me aliens, I can give you their abilities. I can make you the army you sought. Make you power incarnate. In return, you help me. How does that sound? Look at at malware. And he does think about it. He's lost that bloodline many times. This deal is interesting. One he'd rather not like to take. However, he does look at his hands. Him bringing them up as he'd be in a pour with electricity. Him staring at that. Before turning and firing a laser directly at the wall. The wall going to be shot through and exploding. And Vogax stares at that. Hmm. Many things he can do with this. More power. More modifications. This does sound intriguing. Him turning to malware. And beginning to smile. Now, with that being said, I do believe that that is a good point to leave this part off of. And I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.